before diving into the subject in a traditional manner, let us understand the importance of it first, because this way it will form a firm base to study about it. So, whenever you hear about the terms like signals or instrumentation, few other terms may crop uh, in your mind, like signal or data acquisition, measurement, transducer, sensings, variables, values, etc. So, what do you think all these terms lead to? Or what do you think is the ultimate goal of studying all this? So, well, you study this eventually to monitor and control variables or automate process. So the answer is that by studying all these, you eventually want to monitor and control something or some process or plant for which the task of instrumentation is done. In other words, instruments are eyes and ears of the plant where they monitor and monitor the condition, the conditions or variables which are to be controlled. Thus, they enable a smooth operation of the plant. And this instrumentation part leads to proper and precise uh, perception while the control part leads to action according to the variables that are being perceived or measured by the instruments. Notice that we have written here react because uh, an automated system in fact reacts after perceiving the measured values or the variables. Thus, the two process together, that is instrumentation and control in a system lead, lead to what is called as automation. So now, in order to automate a plant or process or system or whatsoever, we require to first extract information related to things or the variables precisely to be controlled. So if we talk about the practices in the past, so most monitoring and controlling tasks involve humans as sensors and actuators or action taker. So for example, if we talk about fluid level control like this one, so uh, or the level that we try to control in our uh, water tanks at home or reservoirs in industries, the fluids are required to be filled at certain preset level, which in the past were monitored by humans. Similarly, the amount of items to be manufactured per day by a company needed an observer to count in the past. For example, if you talk about a biscuit manufacturing company that manufactures, let's say, 10,000 packs of biscuits per day. So previously it required counting that was done by an observer or human. So once the set point or the amount of the preset number of manufacturing units was attained, the process was stopped manually. Likewise, one of the important object we have at home that is a nice example of automated process is the refrigerator. In order to understand its nuts and bolts, I suggest you to go through the first and second lecture of the control system, the video link for which is given in description below. And now if we now a question that crops in mind that is what is the very first stage in making any process automated so the answer to this is sensing so if you look into this picture so if you want to control the level of this fluid or if you want to control the uh, temperature of the water in the bucket so what you first do is you, you have a process that for example, in this case, you have a valve that is being controlled by the human. But in order to actuate or in order to uh, perform the task of controlling the valve or heating the water, you first will have to sense the variables that are being controlled. So if you're going to control the level here, so here you see that the observer is standing and it keeps on looking to the level of the water. And once that desired level is attained, the observer stops the or closes the valve. Likewise, in case of bucket, if you talk about heating of water, then again, you will be somehow 
sensing the temperature so if you see in this picture you'll see that there is a thermometer attached to the bucket that keeps on sensing the temperature of the water so the answer is that you for the first stage is to sense any thing whenever it is desired to control so sensing the process variables are involved and likewise suppose you are driving a car or riding a bike and you suddenly observe a red light on your way so what is next you apply brakes so before applying brakes you first sense the red light that is your eyes work as a sensor and by the way uh, the five sensors in human can be used to control a large number of variables but with the limitation that human can use one sensor at a time and that too sw uh, switches off if humans are asleep in fact sensors keep working uh, during a, uh, the sleep but do not process with the brain as they used to do during a waking state in fact people report to have feel the sixth sense when they are asleep so that's not topic of our study nevertheless humans can sense only five physical conditions and acknowledge in terms of extent of these conditions qualitatively and not quantitative quantitatively so since we are interested in the values of the variables that are being measured for example we talk about the value of temperature the uh, the amount of water filled in the tank so humans fail to quantify the variables that they are capable of sensing using their five senses of uh, the five sensors that humans have so which is again so measuring the values quantitatively or having values uh, in, in numerical or mathematical form is again an important aspect of precise control of any process for instance human can sense temperature by feeling through hand so if you submerge your hand in this bucket you can feel the water to be cold or hot and conclude only about the hotness and coldness that's all but to what extent they are hot and cold that can also be uh, concluded by humans for example if the water is quite hot then human can conclude that it is too hot and for cold quite cold water that can again be concluded as too cold but to precisely control a physical variable we need to know the numerical values or mathematical figures of that physical variable so this is important so if we talk for example talk about uh, the medicines some medicines that require temperature to be maintained between let's say two to eight degrees celsius so for example a mo most common medicine being used nowadays by elderly people is the insulin so that requires uh, a small temperature greater than zero but somewhere between two to five or two to eight degrees celsius and there are some more medicines that are crucial and they are very important to be kept at temperature between 2 and 8 degrees celsius and if this temperature is not maintained then the potency of the medicine is lost and you will be wasting money buying it and wasting time by reporting doctor that it didn't work as a result the doctor might think you might have a different ailment for what was diagnosed and eventually waste of time life So coming to back to our main topic now we if we talk about the term instrumentation so w bolton the author of the book instrumentation and control defines the term instrumentation as the purpose is to the purpose of the instrumentation system used for making measurement is to give a numerical value for the variable that is being measured for example a thermometer will give you a numerical value for the temperature being measured. A voltmeter will give you a numerical value for the voltage being measured. An energy meter will give you the numerical values of energy being measured in, in terms of kilowatt hours. Uh, likewise, you, have, you may have a weighing machine that gives the reading of weight in kilograms for the weight being measured. Then we have a ISA standard, which stands for Instrumentation and System Automation Society. So this is standard 51.1 in 1979 and revised in 1993. The process instrumentation terminology defines it as the collection of instruments and their applications, application for the purpose of observation, measurement and control.
Now another question that comes to mind is that we already have all sorts of analog measuring devices for doing measurements. Then why is there a need to switch to digital measuring devices? In addition, instruments always have some sort of transduction uh, using transducers and almost all transducers have analog output. So this simply means that working with digital techniques of measurement will require to convert the analog output from the accompanying transducer into digital form. So why do we go to the trouble and expense of converting analog signals to digital form? So since we employ, when, when we talk about digital instruments and digital signals, then it means that we eventually will be converting analog signals to digital form in order to process them. So well, the answer to all this is that the digital techniques of measurement offer far better and convenient measurements compared to its analog counterpart. And you all observe this in your wristwatches or wall clocks. If someone asks you about the time and in case you are wearing a wristwatch of analog type, you may have noticed that it takes a bit longer to give an accurate reply. While for the case of digital watch, the response is in fraction of a second. Likewise, when we go to buy stuffs from shops, we naturally tend to prefer shops that have proper scale for measuring weights of products and avoid the ones where we feel things are not honestly being dealt with. So the precise measurement can be made through digital weighing scales. And a similar ontology applies to energy meters, which for the past few years had changed from analog to digital because the energy industry is interested in knowing accurate values of electrical energy consumption from us, like the way we are interested to know the accurate values of the product we buy from shopkeepers. Now we talk about the advantages of the digital techniques or instruments or uh, employing the digital signals in the process. So digital instruments indicate the reading directly in decimal numbers, thus error on account of human factors such as parallax and approximation are eliminated. So one such error in, in the analog type of instrument is shown on the figure at right side. So we can see that the in case of an analog instrument, we, uh, we we may have a problem of parallax error. So if you look into this reading, so this in fact this analog instrument was measuring seven units, but the observation or this image this picture was taken from right side, and thus the observation looks to be six point nine instead of seven. So likewise, if you look into this meter display from left side, you will observe the reading to be around 7.1 and not 7. So such type of errors termed as parallax, parallax are uh, something that analog instruments are always prone to. And this can be overcome by using digital techniques or digital displays where you will only observe the, the values written on the display. So chances of parallax are Cardinal. And the reading may be carried to any significant any number of significant figures by merely positioning the positioning the decimal point. So let's see what's written here. So for example, if you talk about uh, the same digital instrument that is measuring up to three decimal place, so you will be having written as 44.293 up to three decimal place. While if you're going to measure up to four decimal place, in that case, you can have fourth decimal place like 4.5235. And for this, because if you talk about increasing the resolution, the, the DAC which is being used in the digital techniques, so we'll talk about this in detail in, in the units that will be upcoming. So the data acquisition that is that being de done in digital techniques should be high enough to avail this benefit. The output may directly be fed into memory devices for storage and future computations. While if you talk about the analog instruments that have extremely limited storage capabilities, the most such example was tape recorders. Power requirement of digital instruments are considerably, considerably small. So this uh, gave a rise to the well-known loading effect where the analog instruments may load the circuit under measurement and thus indicate an erroneous reading while on the other hand, digital instruments have high input impedance of the order of mega ohm, 
thus they draw negligible power they have much much greater accuracies and precision so this is something that we all know about so shown on the right side is uh, three figures where they have shown they have placed the different readings so we see that the first correspond to inaccurate and imprecise while the second correspond to inaccurate and precise so precise because the readings are quite close but not close to the uh, the set point of the desired value while the third figure shows to have accurate readings as well as precise resolution of digital instruments can be extremely large so the thumb rule for this is that the larger the number of digits higher will be the resolution for example if we talk about an a digital display having eight digits so the resolution is one in 10 raised to the power eight so this will be only possible if you're going to have a display from zero to nine so um, this means that each of these digits will be varying from zero to nine so in that case you will be having a resolution of one in 10 raised to the power eight so we are not talking about displays which will be having only two values zero and one till now so in that case you if you suppose you have a display that only that is capable of only displaying zero and one in that case you will be having this as one in two raised to the power eight now to obtain same number of readings in analog display so since we know that analog display comprises of a needle that moves across the uh, the, the display which is uh, analog in nature so to obtain the same number of readings 1 in 10 to the power 8 in analog display where pointed is assumed to have a 0 0.5 millimeter uh, resolution so in case of analog display this is the resolution 0 0.5 millimeter in fact this is the limit of observation that is put on the eyes of human beings so we as a humans cannot magnify by our bare eyes beyond 0 0.5 mm that is why this this is the limitation so the scale for such type of instrument that is required to have such a high resolution 1 in 10 to the power 8 would be 50 kilometers in length now digital instruments are less less affected by noise variation in component values and are free from mechanical movements so digital instruments deal with high and lows only that is two discrete values thus the chance, chances of noise to overlay the signal is rare so this was the part of a recibo message a radio message which was emitted by the human race in 1974 from mount puerto rico sent to clusters of stars located around 25000 light years from us so if you see that uh, the digital message was written was composed in terms of zeros and ones and since this type of uh, message is difficult to be masked or the chances of no noise that overlays such form of message is rare so that is why we prefer sending signals in the form of digital and by the way this message this signal can be decoded uh, to form the in fact this message uh, comprises of the information of the solar system so this represents the information of the solar system where uh, pictorially it gives a figure like this where the first this thing is re represents the sun this this the the following small square represents mercury planet mercury and the second is planet venus and the third which is shown up upward is planet earth so the message indicates that we live in the planet earth in the solar system so this is the message corresponding to solar system which shows that we live in the planet earth variation in temperature humidity variations supply voltage do not affect the accuracy as well so if, for example if you talk about the wall clock so in wall clocks we see that if the battery power goes down then the the, the the problem that occurs in it is that the display gets dimmer while it keeps on showing the exact right time but if you talk about an analog clock so if it's not a digital clock it's an analog clock 
So in that case, if the battery power goes down, you see clearly see that it is going to show a different time because the movement of the arm, the second arm and the nuts arm will slow down as the battery power drops. While in case of digital clock, the, on, uh, the problem is with the display only if the battery power drops, but it keeps on showing the exact right time. And this is the reason for this is the that it employs the digital clock employs the element called as oscillator. So oscillator are the heart of the digital instruments or digital uh, tech, the, the digital methods that we employ. So oscillator when being supplied with when being energized it is going to generate signals at the exactly because it vibrates and on vibration it generates signal that will be having the same amount of frequency and moreover digital instruments have no friction no delicate construction as that of the analog instruments and the key feature for of digital instruments is conversion of signals from analog into digital forms and vice versa and in other words we term this as digital signal processing and one more thing regarding the digital the, the instrument is that they are to be we, we, we want our instruments to be more precise and accurate so engineers and researchers require accuracy with high certainty of being right some applications require extremely high accuracy and precision for example we talk about the field of medicine so performing surgeries for example on eyes or neuro based by robots where mere human hands may fail because of shivering or because of shaking so it's not preferable to perform such type of surgeries using their hands or we talk about the uh, landing the nasa that lands uh, its probes into mars so that again requires precise control because the location where the probes will be landing on mars is important uh, suppose they assign a, a location on Mars and the probe is landing somewhere else. So this may make the process difficult or failure. And likewise, power operating a nuclear power plant is also something that requires precise measurement. So industries have spent a lot on improving accuracy and precision of, of crucial instruments. And that can easily be achieved if we are going to use or employ digital instruments. So you'll find digital signal processing in almost all areas of technology. So what it does is that it process data. So for processing a data, you require a processor. For example, we talk about sound editing or something adding flows and moving away. So you, in order to identify, for, uh, let's say something which is adding flows, you, you will required to process the signal in such a manner that it identifies whether something is coming close for example we talk about a train that is coming close so the sound that we will be receiving will be different from the sound that when the train goes away so the processor is going to the processor is going to process the signal in such a way that it gives an output like coming close or going away and since we have limited transducers so it's not always possible that we are going to have everything being converted into electrical form. So since we have limitation over transducer, so we have some transducers available that are going to convert some physical variables into electrical form. And thus, which means that you will always have limited analog instrument because analog instrument uh, rely on the transducer that they employ. So analog instrument is usually indicative of variable that can be measured by its accompanying transducer and any other variable that has a linear or limited non-linear relation with the trans transacted variable simply by calibrating in terms of the desired output. So this is something that you all uh, know about that analog instrument. For example, if we talk about uh, an instrument that comprises of measuring weight of object, so let's say a spring scale. A spring weigh, uh, a weighing machine that employs a spring. So in that case, what we have, we in fact uh, know the relation that F is equal to uh, kx, where x is the compression or expansion in the spring, 
and in in in, in that case uh, we can by compression the how much that by putting weight on the spring how much it is going to compress we can have a relation between x and the mass of the uh, weight that is being put on and likewise we can calibrate the weighing scale in terms of the weight of the mass that is put instead of x so this can only be possible if we are going to have the variables that has a linear or limited non-linear relation with the transducted variable simply by calibrating it for example we talk about the uh, the current measuring instruments for example moving iron instrument in that case we have i square proportional to uh, x sorry uh, in case of uh, the electrodynamometer type instrument we have i square proportional to x but in case of instrument that is being controlled using weights for example moving iron instrument we know that i is proportional to sine theta so there exists a non-linear relation between i and theta and thus such instruments can be designed or calibrated in terms of i because the transducted element v or the uh, controlled variable is theta there but we can easily calibrate the instrument in terms of i knowing the, this relation but if we have complicated relations so in, in that case we are not capable of designing we, we fail to design analog instruments which can represent the variable under measurement because we don't have a direct or indirect relation with, uh, direct relation with the variable that the transdu transducer can deal with so once digital representation of the analog data from transducer is obtained then any variable that has any linear and or non-linear indirect relation with the transducted variable can be inferred so this is one of the benefits that digital instruments or digital systems employ that any linear non-linear indirect relation with the transducted variable if known any mathematical relation with the transducted variable is known then that can be easily represented in digital form and digital instruments are said to be the ever-growing instruments or ever-growing techniques while analog multiplexer enables connection of multiple transducer to the same signal processing media so which means that if you are going to employ the digital processing technique then you can you, you can employ multiple analog transducers or sensors connected to the same processing media using multiplexers but there is some drawbacks so it's not always always going to be benefit beneficial using digital instrument so if you look into this panel that is going to control different variables so if we talk about the panels that present in the uh, cockpit of plane or some corrosion process or some nuclear power plant where you will be monitoring multiple controlled variables so we observe that it gets difficult to observe the panel in digital form though things will be precise but observing all the variables at once will be difficult in digital form while will be easy to perceive in analog form if you have any queries you can ask me questions or send me mail